The Linux shell is the environment in which you work, and it's used to interface with the rest of your operating system, as well as to execute commands. Now, Red Hat Enterprise Linux uses the Bash shell by default, but users are free to change their shells. The Bash shell, however, is a good place for newcomers to start. Now, here are a couple of things that you need to know. When you look at the prompt, you should see a dollar sign if you are logged in as a normal user. This is your visual cue that you're logged in as a normal user, as opposed to, and I'm going to switch tabs right now, you can see that uh, I've got a hash sign in my prefix, as opposed to this tab over here, where you can see that I've got a hash sign in my prompt, and this is indicative that I am logged in as an administrative user. The administrative user in Linux is called root. And again, this is important information because when you are reading documentation, if a command is prefixed with a dollar symbol, it means that you don't have to type in the dollar symbol, and in fact means that the command is meant to be executed as a normal user. As opposed to having a command prefixed with a hash sign, it means that the command is meant to be executed as a root user. Now, talking about executing commands, uh, very often we make use of commands with options, which influence how the command is executed, and also arguments. Uh, arguments are very often the objects uh, that the command works against. Your Linux system has a number of amazing documentation references. Chief amongst those would be your manual pages, or man pages for short. Now what you're looking at right now is the man page for a command called ls. And you can see over here that it's used to list directory contents. Having a look at the synopsis, it gives us more information about how you would go about executing this command. So we have the ls command, and then we have uh, options. Now. Anything that is enclosed in square brackets, those would be optional entities. So what this is telling us right now is that you can execute the ls command without any options. However, the ellipses afterwards, outside of those square brackets over there, tells us that you can make use of multiple options. Similarly, you can see that the ls command may be executed against an object. And that object would be a file, as opposed to something like a, a username, for example. So the object or the argument would be a file. And again, it's optional. You don't have to specify a file. However, should you want to specify multiple files, you can. And again, it's as a result of that ellipsis afterwards. So when it comes to documentation in Linux, the notation or the, the synopsis is very important. And again, looking at this, brackets, things are optional. Ellipsis, you can make use of multiples. Now, further below, you can see that we have uh, the options and their meanings. And you can see that one of the options that we have is dash A, and you can also make use of dash dash all. They both mean the same thing. And again, what's happening over here is that um, the A tells us that we are going to show all files, even those files that begin with a period. Typically, files that begin with a period are hidden from normal view. Now, the single dash in front of it tells us that the option is an abbreviated form, as opposed to a double dash, which typically means that the option is meant to be interpreted as an entire word. Now, let's gonna have a look at the following. I'm going to do a directory listing right now, and I'm not going to specify uh, an option. I'm not going to specify any arguments. And you can see that I have a result. You can see that I have directory A, and I have file 1. Now, let's go and make use of, uh, of an option. So again, I'm going to use ls-a. And you can see over here that it now shows me those files that begin with a dot, that begin with a period. And again, those would typically be hidden from your normal view. Now, what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to run ls-a-l-l. -L. Now, what's really important to remember over here is that um, I'm making use of three different options. A is going to be the one option, and I'm using the L option twice. So again, it's got a completely different meaning, as opposed to if I had to run ls dash dash a -L -L. Now, in this particular case, we are interpreting the entire word. In other words, all the characters that make up the option as one option. And you can see that we have a very different result. Now, next, I'm going to show you how to make use of the ls command with an option against an argument, and again, using multiple arguments. So let's go and do an ls, a directory listing, using an option called dash l. We're going to do a long listing right now, and we're going to do it against uh, file 1. So ls would be the command, the dash l would be the option, and then we have file 1, which would be an example of the argument. So let's go and have a look at that result. Now, a command may also be constructed in the following way. In which case, I'm running the ls command using one option against two arguments. The two arguments would be file 1 and file A. And I'm not breaking any rules over here, because if we go back to the man page, which tells us more about how to make use of the ls command. In the synopsis, it says, well, you can make use of multiple options. And you're allowed to make use of multiple arguments. So let's go and have a look at the output of that command. And you can see that it works perfectly. 
So guys, if you want to access man pages on a Linux system, you can make use of the command man. And then very often, you could refer to a command or a configuration file, for example. So let's gonna have a look at uh, one more over here. I'm going to show you the man page for a tool called crontab. And you can see that the purpose of crontab is to maintain crontab files for individual users. Now look at the synopsis over here. You can see that uh, it could get quite complex. And the interpretation thereof is very important. So looking at uh, running the crontab command, you can run it against a file. So in this particular case, using this notation over here, uh, you, would, uh, you would use an argument. Further to that, the use of a user or the use of the dash u option is optional. Again, it's enclosed in square brackets. Now looking at the notation slightly below that, we have uh, crontab and again, the dash u and then the reference to the user as the argument would be optional. However, this is very interesting notation that we have over here. You see, when you have options that are separated by a pipe, it means that you can only make use of one of them at a time. So you could make use of crontab-l, or you can make use of crontab-r, or you can make use of crontab-e. You wouldn't be able to make use of, uh, of those options in one particular command. And then the use of the dash i and the dash s, those would be completely optional. Now, looking at the next uh, example that we have over here, you could say crontab, and then you would specify dash n. And if you are going to make use of dash n, you could optionally specify a host name. And then we have a couple of other examples of how you could execute crontab. Now, the question that I very often ask my students is, can I run the crontab command on its own without specifying any options and without specifying any arguments? And the answer is, yes, you can. And here's why. When you look at that uh, second example of the synopsis over here, you can see that every item over here is in square brackets. And that means that we can run the crontab command without any options and without any arguments. Something important that you ought to know about right now is how to get out of a man page. I showed you how to access a man page. To get out, simply hit Q on your keyboard. Now, most production servers don't have a keyboard, mouse, and monitor connected to them. And they're located in icy cold server rooms anyway. So a popular way to send commands would be uh, to use a remote shell. So for that, we have the SSH protocol. And SSH stands for Secure Shell and is a protocol for providing you with just that. So let's go and have a look at this tab over here. I've got the command queued up already. You can see that the command is SSH, and we are wanting to make a connection to a remote server as the user student. And the server that we are connecting to is called Server A. So in this particular case, guys, you can see that I was logged into a computer called Demo as a user called Kiosk. And right now, my prompt reveals that I'm logged in as a user called Student at a server called Server A. So with that, guys, that's some basic information about the shell. I will see you in the next video.